joining us right now, fresh back from the booths in Carolina. Monday Night Football, great listen and watch with him and uh, and uh, Orlovsky and our friend Chris Fowler. And then fresh back with Mark Jones from the booth in Boulder, two highly watched games over the weekend, <laughs> is our friend from the worldwide leader in sports, Lewis Riddick, back here on the program. Good to see you, Lewis. What's up, man? How are you? Look, Lewis, you have been to many a football stadium in your life, in your career, in your many uh, jobs. Uh, yeah. First time Lil Wayne's come out? With a team, Lewis, first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen I haven't seen that before. Okay, yeah. so that's new. It was new for me. New for me as yeah, well. It, you know, new for me as well. What was it? What's What's it like to be in a production conversation meeting with Deion Sanders, Lewis? What's it's that actually, like? um, it's very informative. It's look, De- Deion's. I'm 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 very comfortable talking to him, obviously, Rich, because I've been around him before as a teammate and someone who I've stayed in contact with. And you you know how he is. I mean, he was out there at NFL Network for all those years. He's he, he very much so wants to be taken very serious about what he's trying to get done out there in Colorado. It's not there's there's no showmanship. There's no primetime Dion when he's in a production meeting. He's all about business. He's all about trying to inform you about why he's involved in coaching, how he's trying to positively impact kids, how he's trying to affect change in Colorado and Boulder, what he's done to build up what really is a darn good staff that has a lot of football intelligence, football experience, football intellect on it. What he has envisioned for the future as far as how he thinks he needs to improve this football team. And he was very open and honest about all that. And he also wanted to talk about you know, how he's trying to affect the future of prospective black head coaches in college football and how that's that's something that really means a lot to him. And he's hoping that the way in which he is now going about his business and how, and the results that he's getting opens people's eyes up to maybe different ways of of perceiving people who don't necessarily fit into a certain box. Like in, in that everyone should not be, you know, forced to kind of conform to certain ideals in terms of the, how you express yourself and have that be something that really works against you as far as your overall competency and your ability to get the job done. Because Dion style, as we all know, is something we ain't never seen before. And people are uncomfortable with that. A lot of people are uncomfortable with that. And he's hoping that people do get comfortable with it because in the end, there's two, there's kind of like two, there's two sides to him. There's the showman side, the marketing side, the guy who is just as charismatic and whose star burns as, as hot as the sun. And then there's the old school guy who holds these kids accountable in a very, very old school way that all of us are very accustomed to who grew up in our era and who played football at any level in our era. And I'm telling you, that is something that if you went and watched him conduct a meeting, watched him conduct practice and how he walks around that facility, you would see he is, does not play any BS around there. And kids toe the line. And he is trying to coach them in that way and coach them in that way both on and off the field. And that's very, very important for him to make sure that that message gets out there and that it is crystal clear. Because I, I think some people kind of look at him and look at how brash and how confident he is, and they get put off by that, and they automatically jump to the conclusion, well, he couldn't be a coach. He could never hold anybody you know, accountable. He could never you know, run a tight ship and keep people – wrong 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 he can and he is you know and 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 he, i told him this when he was on the show friday lewis and and, and, and again because i know him it is mystifying to me he's in his fourth decade or 40th year of being viewed um as flashy and all about himself when that's a persona to basically market and right. how and and so the fact that people are still misconstruing him or um, looking at him as if he's unserious, I, yeah. I, I can't, it, it just mystifies me. And you said that it makes people uncomfortable because aren't we looking for coaches in this day and age? When I say ask Andy Reid when he came on the program just before the beginning of the season, like how are you relating to this generation of player? You know, why, why, why is that a legitimate question, which I think it is for Andy Reid, and and some people who might agree with that ascribe Dion a sense of unseriousness when he's clearly completely in tune with this yeah. generation 
while, as you point out, as old school as ever. Why do you think, and I'll ask you this, even though I kind of know the answer, why do you think it makes people uncomfortable, Lewis? Because, <laughs> because it does. And because people, it's it, that's not the way they expect or want it to, quote unquote, look like. Because that's not what they're used to. Because quite honestly, Rich, long after we're gone, and my kids are in my position and their kids' kids are in their position, there will be these biases that exist towards certain people who do things a certain way that will be passed down, meaning these biases from generation to generation. And I don't think it'll ever go away in, in its total in totality. Now, will it lessen maybe as the generations continue to advance? And kids become much more open-minded to a way of doing things that maybe the people of our generation are not. And I see that in the generation after us. I mean, I, I have kids who are, who are you know, past college age, who are about to be college age, who are about to be high school age, who look at things much differently, much differently, who are much more open-minded to, like, they look at Dion and they go, yeah. I like that. Mm. I would love to play for someone like that. I'd love to be around something like that. And while at the same time, as I say to them too, and I say to anybody else who would be considering whether or not to send their send their kid to be coached by him, but don't get it twisted now. It is not all fun and games and flash and dash and, and, and jewelry and glasses and hoodies now. <laughs> he will get in your rear end in a in a serious way in terms of holding you accountable, which is I think it's it's exactly what you're looking for, Rich, right? You're looking for someone who understands, hey, be yourself, have fun, express yourself, market yourself. We're all in this world, whether it be you know when you get to college and beyond, we're all in this world to try and make a life for ourselves and make a life for ourselves as grandiose as possible, depending upon what your individual goals are. And Dion has talked about that extensively going all the way back to his days in college, why he even came up, came up with the whole moniker of prime time. And it was for a purpose. And he does not try to keep anyone from doing that. As a matter of fact, he encourages people to do that. But he also understands the value of doing it the right way, treating people the right way, towing the line the right way, understanding what hard work means and how it will keep you on the straight and narrow and keep you continually reaching for higher and higher goals. That you know, that's and that's one of the reasons why, like when we asked him. And he said this before, why he said he, he doesn't want to coach in the pros. Mm -hmm. he, people go, well, you, you seem like a natural fit to want to coach in the NFL, the biggest thing. He's like, no, 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 -uh. no not at all. He goes, I, I, you think I really want to be bothered with someone who's making all this money but don't want to put in the work? You think I'm going to put up with that? Me? <laughs> it was, and he said, no, I can affect these kids in a positive way because they actually want to listen. So, were you so it, it's uh yeah, his his way of going about it, it's not like everything else that you typically see amongst the most successful college coaches both now and in the past. And they're just our old traditionalists for whatever – well, we, we know what some of the reasons are that will never accept his way of going about it and some that will. And there are some eyes that are being opened and people are going to be forced to reconsider, man. They I, just are. I agree. And and last one for you on this, and then we'll turn to the actual X's and O's in football on this subject, and then what you saw last night on Monday Night Football, Lewis Riddick here on the Rich Eisen Show. You were so eloquent on this subject matter, which is a testament to your uh, ability as a broadcaster, Lewis, that you could do this in between snaps, for crying out loud, of a game. Yeah. But were you surprised Jay Norvell went there with Dion? Knowing um, knowing what we've just discussed, he has to know what we've just discussed, or is he just winding his players up for a rivalry game, Lewis? You know, whether or not he was winding his players up or not, I said this, I believe, during the broadcast, and I've said it um, in private too. You have to be aware of the impact of your words and how they may or may not be perceived if you do not provide the proper context. And that's kind of what it seems like he is insinuating that, hey, look, I was not in any way, you know, attacking Dion or his upbringing or his, or you know, his mother or, or anything about him from a character standpoint. I was more or less just talking to my guys about how I like to do things and what I expect them to do when they're kind of conduct. And, but you know what? That may be true, but the fact of the matter is 
Dion is the biggest story in sports right now. Mm -hmm. This was a rivalry game. Dion wears glasses. He wears a hat. You're conducting, and he does his press conferences in that, and you're coming on and you're saying, I don't care how they perceive me in Boulder. They're going to be mad at me anyway. But I tell my kids, it's an easy, easy, easy connection to make to say, well, what you're saying is <laughs> he is whatever, 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 in terms of how he was brought up. That you have to be more aware than that. And you have to be aware of the fact that when African Americans talk that way and insinuate those kind of things and kind of advance those kind of stereotypical thoughts about people, and you're doing it about your someone, one of your own, so to speak. Mm -hmm. What do you think that that's going to add fuel in a way that is, you know, of a, of a, infinite magnitude to the people who are already predisposed to having those kind of stereotypical thoughts about you and people like me in the first place. And then when you do that, 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 like I said, that really disappointed me because you have to have more awareness than that, man. You have to be careful and choose your, choose your world words carefully. And in this case, choose how you're going to motivate your team more intelligently. Don't, don't go there with that and not provide context because you just open the door for a whole bunch of BS, and you saw how it escalated. I mean, his team, Colorado was hot right from the get-go. And nationally, there were people who were pissed off about that, and rightfully so. And then I was we, one of them. And then we saw the game as well. Um, Lewis Riddick here on the Rich Eisen Show. X's and O's it for me then. You know, obviously Travis Hunter out, Oregon this week, yeah. USC after that. I mean, how far do you think Dion's team is going to go here? Uh, obviously, they're going to be bowl eligible. I think we can already assume that right now, yeah. barring anything unforeseen, certainly with the way yeah. that Shador is playing. Uh, and all due respect to Shiloh, where he apparently isn't his father's children's <laughs> ranking. Um, you know, <laughs> okay. you know, like they they got some. They have some players here, Lewis. What are you seeing? X's and O's yeah. here. Yeah, they are. I think they're built in a way that over the long haul, it's going to get them maybe exposed against better competition, meaning this. They're kind of built outside in instead of inside out. Mm -hmm. The best players are on the perimeter, on the periphery, and down the middle is where, like, he, he'll he'll honestly tell you, look, is where they need more help. They need more fortification, meaning the offensive line, defensive line, pass rushers. And I think once you get to the heavyweights in terms of the competition, that's where he could run into some trouble. His team could run into some trouble where guys are built stronger, they're bigger, stronger, faster up front on both lines in particular, both lines of scrimmage. So I think that's where we'll see a test this week, obviously with Oregon. Um, when you when you get to USC, it's going to be about, you know, which defense, and really it's going to be about maybe which offense has the ball last, <laughs> all right, because they can both go up and down the field, although missing Travis is going to be a big-time thing. But I think he he understands that as he told us, quote unquote, he said, I'm about six or seven dogs away from actually really doing this thing the way I want to do it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and he said, look, I need about two or three more offensive linemen. I need a couple more pass rushers. I may need me another corner. Heck, he may need another quarterback if his if his if his son leaves this year. So he understands where they're at. His expectation is always to be in it to compete to the very end. And his team's going to play that way. And he showed that. But I think he also knows we ain't quite there yet. And so, of course, there are going to be people who are sitting on the outside, Rich, just waiting to tear them down when they lose. But I don't think he expects to win realistically every game, but he expects to compete every game. Sure. And um, I think, you know, as long as Shador is healthy and enough of the wide receiver core is healthy and they have some good players in the secondary who, as you can see, can make plays on the ball. They'll be in it. Their, their competitive character on that football team is just too good for them not to be. I'm sure there are many people who thought, you know, halfway, three quarters of the way through that football game the other night, they were sitting. There were people who had a story already written and were ready to push send about the death of Colorado football losing to Colorado State, mm -hmm. and they came back and bam. So there's going to still be people waiting. But I don't think he has any unrealistic expectations relative to where he thinks they still need to make this team stronger. But damn, is it fun to watch them play oh, It's because of the speed they have, the style in which they do it, and the style that their coach brings to the table, man. It, it's it's unlike anything we've ever seen. The Rock said it's disruptive, that Dion is a disruptor. And there, there's 
every person, you know how many people are watching college football now who had no interest in watching college football before no at doubt. all? Lewis. At, at all. Lewis, Lewis, you were in the booth of a Monday night football game last night, week two, mm-hmm. Carolina putting their first overall pick and Heisman Trophy winner and Bryce Young out there against the Saints, who improved to 2-0. and and yeah. we're talking about Colorado versus Colorado State, and not a single person will bat their eye at us spending 15 minutes chopping up that game first the way that we have. And yeah. that is the prime effect. Also, I loved Mark Jones pointing out that uh, the ultimate prime effect is offset being interviewed while offsetting penalties are happening. You know, like that that <laughs> happened. In your broadcast, you know what I mean? Like, I'm loving this. Yeah. I am here for it. I'm here yeah. for all of it. I mean, you and me both. I, I, when we were down on the field, Rich, free game, Mark and I were standing there, and Quentin Kesnick was there, and there were some other people from ESPN around. And, and I was like, there is a football game going on, right? <laughs> right? We are going to play a game, right? Yeah. Because there was like this electricity in the air. Like, it was like, I, I, I can't quite understand it. Like you were like hanging out at a red carpet slash big time award show where you're going, oh yeah, there's The Rock. Oh yeah, there's Master P. Oh, Lil Wayne's coming up, and and everybody's just kind of looking around and there's phones <laughs> and it's and it's real crowded and there's just like this bu- and the music, the music they have the best sound system out. I don't know what Dion. I don't know if he asked them to improve the sound system. Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm sitting there like you naturally standing out oh, there yeah. had to go like this. We were like, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know? I'm sure he did. Then, I'm sure he did. And then Lewis. he comes out. Yeah. Right. So some of his players are out warming up and the team's starting to trickle out. And you just hear this groundswell of this, ooh, like this. And you know somebody's coming. So people are looking around like, and, and then you just hear people going, Prime's coming, Prime's coming. And he comes out of the tunnel and he's just taking a lap around the field just to walk. But he's got, Five security guards. There's cameras. There's there's this megaphone. And then all of a sudden he walks down. You know, and I talked to him for a quick second, and and then he kept moving. And the student section is already jam packed. And he walks over this. there, and these kids are like, it's like it's third and six with the game on the line. That's how loud these kids were. And then you hear them just break out into this chant: Deion Sanders, Deion, and it's just it's nuts. I love it. And I had goosebumps. I have goosebumps telling you this story. I love it. And imagine it what it would be. out of control. Imagine what it would be if 4-0 going in against USC. I've got uh, Lewis Riddick here. Before I let you go, uh, obviously, yeah. let's let's talk about that Monday night game that you called. What did you learn eyeballing uh, Saints, Panthers by uh, in that booth on Monday night? Yeah. Um, well, starting with the with the Panthers, because everyone's everyone wants to know what you know what the story is with Bryce. Bryce Young just needs help. They don't have wide receivers that can separate. The offensive line's a work in progress. They're just not explosive enough on offense, and he's not ready to be the guy who can make up for what they don't have. He's not ready for that yet because he's still trying to find his way, and Frank Reich and that tremendous coaching staff down there, they're trying to guide him through that. They played real good defense last night. I can tell you this, Jiro Evero, their defensive coordinator, who was with Denver last year. He's yes. a rock star future head coach in the making. He can scheme it up and teach it against anybody. And he kept them in the game as long as he could yep. from a defensive standpoint. But the Saints, the Saints have what could potentially be a, I, you know, when I say historic, like that, that sounds a little hyperbolic, but look, Demario Davis thinks that they could be a historic quality defense. Mm-hmm. They, and I can see why. They have pass rushers. They have guys who can stop the run. He's a perennial all-pro. Pete Warner is a burgeoning all-pro. Marshawn Lattimore is already an all-pro. Tyron Matthews is like, you know, the brains behind the whole operation back there. They, they just have ballers everywhere. And Derek Carr right now, as soon as he gets on the same page on a consistent basis with this wide receiver court and Alvin Kamara comes back, they'll be able to hang points on anybody because they're explosive as hell. So – that's a team that right now is finding its way and still racking up wins. They're going to be there in the end. They should win their division. First time and in the be a player in the, in the playoffs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So first time in the since the the South has been established in the NFC that there's three two and O teams. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, are you are you calling Eagles and Bucks next week too, Lewis? Are you on no, that one? Uh, no, we have. Okay. 
We have next week, um, we have the Rams at the Bengals. Okay, so you're doing that one. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, oh, okay, so who do you who do you have? Do you think the Saints can win that division? You, you have the, Absolutely. Okay. I, I don't see why they shouldn't. Look, I, I mean, I love the Bucs. I love Todd Bowles. You, I mean, everyone knows that. But the, the Saints are the Saints are loaded, man. They they really are. And like I said, when Kamara gets back, you know, he is going to him along with Tony Jones, who wound up running the football last night pretty darn well late in the game, and Taysom Hill, who's who's a heck of a Swiss Army knife. They've got pretty much everything you need to contend at the very highest level. At the very highest level. So I'm I'm really high on New Orleans for sure. Okay. Well, I appreciate the time, man. What a life you're leading right now, Lewis. Just you're, oh. you're, honestly, one one week one week you got Dion and Lil Wayne. Next week you got Puka Nakua. You know, I mean, you're, <laughs> I mean, let's it's go. Not too bad. Let's go. It's not too bad. It's dude. great. The, it's it's the live events. You know how they are. The live events. You, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, you're awesome, man, and I appreciate you uh, coming on in short notice uh, after a very busy weekend. Great stuff. Great job. Let's do this again more often, Lewis, as yeah, you know. Yeah, All right. You got it. That's Lewis Riddick Thanks. of the Worldwide Leader in Sports. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 